Having a standardized SEO report dashboard has helped us evaluate our performance across a wide array of clients. So I'm gonna walk through uh, our structure and how we approach reporting and how we approach building uh, a template that we can reuse for multiple clients. So uh, in terms of structure, the first thing I like to do is lead off with a section where we could handwrite insights. So in here, we're looking to write a few insights of what we've seen happen, uh, why we think it happened, and ultimately uh, what we're gonna do about the data. So you want this to be actionable, but we still wanna recap what happened and get into some uh, of the details of performance. Uh, growth opportunities, we always like to look for, is there something we're not doing that we should be doing, or is there something we should be doing more of or less of uh, that will lead to more growth? So we wanna kind of have that full picture of what happened and we're, what we're gonna do next uh, up front on this first slide. A lot of times we'll even add um, a couple charts at, at the bottom here that kind of summarize performance. And this would be more in a report format. Uh, if you're doing more of a dashboard where it's gonna be static, you can just skip this slide and move on to some of the, the next ones. But I like to lead with uh, website metrics. So before we actually get into SEO, I first like to know what what's happening on the website as a whole. So usually what we do here is we trend out three metrics, uh, typically one or two conversions that are important. This one is e-commerce, so we have revenue, but if it was lead gen, this could be a certain type of form submission, a demo request, whatever it is. Um, we could do conversion rate here, or we could do an alternate conversion. If there's a different type of conversion that happens on the website, we can track that as well. Then I like to have an overall feel of traffic because before getting into SEO, it's good to know is, is the website as a whole increasing or decreasing for all channels? Then when we look to evaluate SEO, we have a little more context on how everything else is doing before digging into just SEO. So this is a really quick uh, way to, just with a few KPIs to get a feel for what's happening on the website. Then I look to, like to look at top channels. So of all the channels, how does organic search compare to the rest of them? And what does the change look like? Did every channel go down? Did certain channels go up for conversions or traffic? Those are the types of things we wanna see before we actually start digging into SEO and organic search in particular. So I really like to look at just traffic and conversions. We could also look at engagement rate and conversion rate by channel to see if there's any outliers or if anything looks interesting that will help us when we go and actually analyze our SEO performance. So then from there, I really have a few standard reports here, about six of them that I like to look at on a regular basis that give me a good feel for how the SEO program is doing as a whole. So the first one is gonna be very similar to that website slide. It's just gonna be filtered to organic search only. And we're gonna rotate in impressions. So I'm gonna choose a the most important conversion action. In this case, it was revenue, but for lead gen, again, it could be forms, it could really be anything. Then I wanna see how organic traffic is trending. And then I wanna see how impressions are trending. This gives me a good, uh, approach and a good kind of three phases of SEO to look at is so when we think about um, overall performance, if conversions are going down, but traffic and impressions are going up, that might mean we need to look at our calls to actions and see what kind of offers we have throughout the website. Uh, if everything is trending up, obviously that's a good thing, but it's still worth kind of digging into why. If traffic is trending down, that's going to be something worth investigating. Sometimes traffic may be flat, but impressions are going up. So we know we're kind of in the right direction. Ultimately, we wanna see traffic and conversions improve, but if impressions are going up, that's usually um, an indicator that traffic may follow. So having these three give us kind of a good overall picture of what's happening. Then the next slide is we dig into a little more specific detail. So I like to create a custom report here that is filtered to just the pages I'm working on. And you could duplicate this. This one's looking at pages that were optimized. You can make the same version of this for new content and just show the organic traffic to all the new content you've developed to see how is that working as a whole. So I usually like to group this by on-page optimization on one slide, then new content production. That gives me a good feel for like, where are we getting most of the improvement from? Is it from optimizing pages or is it from creating new pages or are both working? Um, this can give you a feel for that at a quick glance. Uh, I also like this functionality of building in cross filtering where I can click on a page and I could see how is this individual page performing? So we could see this page um, was published and then we could kind of see the ramp up. There was two months where we were kind of consistent and then we've had two months of large increases. So being able to quickly click and filter this data to have this visual visualization can really help us uh, speed up your analysis. Uh, it's difficult to do this in Search Console and actually get this visualization here. 
the visuals in Search Console aren't as um, good for analyzing long-term trends. You don't have as much flexibility. So this can really help. Um, all you really need to do to build this is build a long regex filter with all the pages you've optimized or all the pages that you've uh, developed and created. You just need the URLs and you can create, I'll, we'll show that on the back end quickly. You can create a filter that basically just says landing page contains, this one we're just looking at all blogs, but it would be something like this if um, you had multiple pages you were typing in. So I'm just gonna close out of that. Uh, then the next thing I like to look at is another custom report. But what I'm doing here is it's kind of similar to the last one, but I'm looking at everything together. So I'm, I'm just gonna move myself over. So if we look at this report, um, it's showing all the different tactics we're doing. So on-page optimization, upgrading older content, title and meta testing, and new content production. And then I can, I can click on one of these tactics and see how that's trending as a whole over time. So are we increasing organic traffic from on-page optimization? In this case, it looks like we are. So we've had some nice improvement. Now it's been relatively flat. So maybe that's worth looking into. Uh, I could also look at what about upgrading older content, a similar trend. We had a big spike, it dropped off, but long-term it does look like it's trending up. So this tactic looks to be working. I can do the same thing and quickly see how our title and meta testing is performing. And then ultimately I can check new content as well. Um, and again, the way you do this is just by building out filters. So it is a little bit tedious of an upfront work, but it's a really interesting way to analyze all the various tactics. And you could easily add link building as another category and analyze that as a whole. So here we can see actually new content is working. So if you're doing client reporting, this is a great way to build in upsells and kind of show the client what's working and what's not, and then reallocating the budget or increasing the budget if a certain SEO tactic is working. So in this case, it looks like new content production is increasing. Maybe we can get three or five, 10 times the result if we were to increase the content budget. Um, so those are the kind of decisions you can make when you have this data and this kind of visual of how these metrics are trending. And you don't have to do just traffic. You could do the same thing with conversions and see each of these tactics if they're moving the needle for new conversions to the website. So the way to do this is we build a, a metric here. So I'm just gonna show the one that's already built called page tactics. And really you just make these regex formulas and you include all the URLs that you want uh, with a pipe bar and then you could name it whatever you want and you could do the same thing for each tactic. So this is just a quick version of it, but uh, all you need is a list of URLs and this can give you some additional insight that's sometimes difficult to find uh, without this level of reporting. So if we go back to the report, um, the next thing I like to look at is brand versus non-brand. So using Google Search Console, we can group all the keywords into brand or non-brand and we can see clicks and impressions. What I'm looking for here is um, basically the difference between the two. And sometimes what we'll see is brand might be trending down and maybe the client or the website you're working on has a lot of branded traffic. So it makes it look like the SEO performance is declining, but you might find that non-brand is actually trending up. In that case, it's more of a brand awareness. There might be larger issues or other things to look at outside of SEO. Without this breakdown, you'll have a difficult time understanding that. And um, this is a really clear way to see visually what's happening. So in this case, um, when we can actually do the same thing, we can click on one tactic or uh, one type of keyword. So in this case, we'll click on brand and we can see just the branded uh, traffic and impressions. And then we could do the same thing for non-brand. In this case, like we could see it from both, non-brand's improving pretty dramatically, but it also looks like brand is improving as well. So this report, again, it's similar uh, method of building this is inside the data source, you can create a metric or dimension called brand versus non-brand, and then you just define some rules on what is a, a brand keyword, and then you just say everything else is non-brand. So here we can see, yeah, brand is trending up. Actual traffic has been a little stagnant for brand, and non-brand seems to be where we're getting most of the results, which is a good thing if you're running an SEO campaign, because that's really gonna be your, your primary focus uh, in most cases. So after that, I like to dig into specific keyword performance a little bit closer. Now that we kind of know the overall trends, we know what content tactics are working and optimization tactics are working. Uh, now we can dig into specific keywords. So this report will show our average position and the clicks, and then we can click on an individual keyword and start to see how each one's trending. So in this case, we could see this keyword here. Um, looks like we were on the first page, then we dropped off and now we've trended back close to position one. Um, so that would be worth looking into what happened here, but we could also see clicks are, are steadily trending up. Uh, if we click on another one, we can click on this keyword and same thing. So this one, we were actually on page eight or nine of Google, 
And then we got to the first page, dropped off, and now we've been consistently averaging in position one uh, for this one. So again, this gives you just a quick way to kind of go through some of your priority keywords and see how those are trending. And the feature of being able to click and interact is really important because this gives you a lot of detail and a lot of analysis that you can do at a really rapid pace without having to make custom filters in Search Console or click through the reports there. So this will give us our keyword performance. And then the final thing I like to look at is, and this is a little bit of a custom report that we built, is how many impressions do we have at each position of the first page? And then how many do we have on page two and then page three and so on? So the nice thing about this is we can compare the last three months versus the prior period and just quickly see, okay, in position one, are we showing up more or less? In this case, we're showing up more. Then we can look at position two, impressions have doubled. And we can really go down the list and get kind of a high level view of overall visibility. Now, page two to page five here are really important. Sometimes this can get overlooked. If we're doing a lot of new content production, you may not be able to show traffic increases for the first few months, but you should see a big spike in impressions in this area. So that's a, a key thing that I'll highlight. If a client or uh, your leadership team is asking like, what's the result of the new content production and you can't actually point to traffic or conversions yet, this is a great way to show, hey, we are trending in the right direction. Our visibility is dramatically improved in this page two to five area. And now we're working on just getting that onto page one where we're actually gonna get the traffic and the clicks. So um, this can be a good way to kind of identify some of that. Now reporting as a whole, I find often tends to be an afterthought or it gets overlooked. We're really reporting um, should be an opportunity to either reinforce the relationship you have with your clients. Uh, it's also a good way to do soft upsells and have the data to back up your recommendations on why you're recommending to increase the scope, or maybe you're recommending to pull out of a certain tactic and not do it anymore and shift into something that's working. But it's a really good way to kind of build that strategic partnership with your client. And I find a lot of, uh, a lot of times, and we've done this in the past as well, where we just kind of copied one of the dashboards that Looker Studio gives you in the template gallery and you get overloaded with data and then they try to jam so much information on one slide that it's not clear what's actually happening. So making your own report dashboard template is a nice way to have kind of a consistent format that you like that gives you the insights you need and then you can repeat that and duplicate the same format uh, for all your clients. Now there is some debate and there is difference on reports versus dashboards. So a lot of times with a dashboard, you're, you are looking to jam in a lot of information because it's more for internal use. You're just trying to get a bunch of insight quickly. With a report, you're really trying to tell more of a story and show uh, showcase what's actually happening and paint the narrative around what's happening and why it's happening. But I find this blended approach where this can work as a report, but it also can be an interactive dashboard helps me speed up the time it would take to make completely custom reports, but I also still can interact and get a lot of the data I wanna need, uh, need and do a lot of the analysis. So um, so yeah, this is a kind of our standard, just SEO report template. Uh, we will be giving this one away. Uh, this one's coming out uh, within the next month and you'll be able to just add your data sources and make a copy and utilize a lot of the data we have uh, in this template and then feel free to build on top of it and add your own ideas and it could be a great starting point so you don't have to build a report from scratch.